So just like we talked about with the area of polygons and the area of circles, we've got some formulas that go with the total surface area of these, both these polyhedrons and non-polyhedrons, and then some volume formulas as well. So, uh, you know, the formulas get a little bit tricky, I suppose, to memorize. Uh, when it is a polyhedron, when I think about surface area, I don't really think of these formulas. And by the way, the formulas with the letters in it, um, S stands for total surface area, P is perimeter of the base, V is volume, B is the area of the base, H stands for the height, L stands for the slant height, which we'll talk about, and R is a radius of circle. Um, I don't really like to do the formulas, honestly, for the surface area of a polyhedron. I just like to think of, of adding up all of the sides. I don't know. I just find that easier than trying to like think about a kind of a weird formula and then if I don't remember it, think that I'm stuck. Now, on the other side, I do need to kind of be careful with uh, with this group because I do kind of need some formulas here. It's not quite as obvious of just adding up all of the sides here. So uh, when you're doing surface area of the non-polyhedrons, you may want to reference those formulas. Uh, volume, essentially for all prisms, it's the area of the base times the height. Okay, so that will give you the total volume, whether it's a triangular prism or a rectangular prism or a pentagonal prism. If you find the area of the base and multiply it by the height of the prism, that will give you the volume. Same thing for a regular pyramid. Um, or for a pyramid that you have here. Um, I like to think of this as area of the base times height divided by three, though, to be honest, rather than times one third, because I just prefer the idea of dividing by three rather than multiplying by a third. Um, but ag again, capital B there stands for the area of the base, and then you multiply that times the height of the pyramid itself. So um, not the slant height necessarily, that might be involved in some calculation, but the overall height of the pyramid. Um, the volume of a cylinder is essentially the same as the volume of a prism because this pi r squared is essentially the area of the base and h is the height. So again, um, kind of area of the base times the height, the area of the circle times the height is really the volume of the cylinder. Think about just filling up that cylinder by finding that area and then just going right straight up. Um, the volume of a cone is the, a little bit different. It's pi r squared, which is the area of a circle, times the height um, divided by 3. Um, so that one's a little bit different. This is essentially the first part of it. Notice, like, that's just the same as this. Like, this is the same as this. So the only thing that's different is that we are taking that and dividing it by 3 or multiplying it by a third. So I might even think pi r squared times height divided by 3. Essentially, three cones fill... The volume of three cones fill the, the cylinder that has the same base and the same height. So that's kind of interesting. And then this one right here, the volume of a sphere is four-thirds times pi r cubed. Uh, we know for any volume that there's going to be three variables that are getting multiplied together uh, because that's what creates the three dimensions. So in this case, it's r cubed. In the previous one, it was r squared times h. So there's three variables, two r's and an h that are getting multiplied together. Okay, so that is the list of formulas. You might want to just reference that, make note of it. So we're going to do this cone here, and we're going to calculate the volume and surface area of it. I'm actually going to do the surface area first. And since it is a cone, uh, let's, let's do think about the surface area of the cone formula up here. Um, I like to think of that as the circle first, actually. So the, the area of the base, which is a circle, so pi r squared, plus pi r l, where l is this slant height. It's called the slant height. It's kind of the diagonal that takes you from the vertex to the base. So those are the calculations we're going to meet, need. Let's see what we've got here. Uh, we know that the radius is 6 centimeters, and we know that the height is 10. So we're going to use that now. So pi times 6 squared plus pi times 6 uh-oh, we don't have the slant height here, do we? Um, we have the overall height, but what we need for this calculation is the slant height. I hope you're seeing right here that what is outlined really is a right triangle. 
And so if we're going to calculate that slant height, we can do that, but we have to use our old friend, the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where a and b are the legs, and c is the hypotenuse. And so let's put in the numbers here. So we have 6 squared plus 10 squared is equal to L squared, because that's our hypotenuse is the slant height. So that'd be 36 plus 100 is equal to L squared. 136 is equal to L squared. And the square root of 136, then if we take the square root of both sides, uh, is going to be equal to the slant height. Now you can estimate that if you're good with your square roots um, just in your head. You might say, okay, well, I know that's between 11 and 12, maybe a little bit closer to 12. But I'm going to keep it just as the square root of 136 right now to keep it exact. Because uh, it is going to be an irrational number. It is going to be a decimal that repeats up, um, or goes on, doesn't necessarily repeat. So it is going to go on. And so we are going to just keep that exact for as long as possible. So we're going to multiply 36 times pi plus pi times 6 times the square root of 136. Now I'm going to punch that all in my calculator. And if if I'm using my calculator, I am going to use the pi button, um, but you can, if you want, use 3.14 in place of pi if you would like to do that. I'll cover the answers to both. So if you add these together, multiply and then add these together, so 36 times pi plus pi times 6 times square root of 136, uh, you do get about 143.6. It is an area. So we're gonna do square centimeters for this. Now, if you happen to use 3.14 instead of the pi button, you're gonna get something that's pretty close, um, but it ends up, the rounding actually rounds it to 143.5 instead of 143.6. So if you use pi, um, or if you use 3.14 instead of pi, then you get that. Either way is fine with me. So that would be the surface area. Now, volume isn't going to take quite as much work, fortunately. Uh, the volume of any cone uh, would be these formulas here. And like I said, I like to use the pi r squared times h divided by 3 rather than multiplying by a third. So I'm just going to rewrite that formula, pi r squared times h divided by 3. So do we have all that information? I think we do. Pi times 6 squared times the height of 10 divided by 3. So if I punch that into my calculator, pi times 36 times 10 divided by 3, uh, we get approximately 377. And, or, or yeah, I think it is approximately. I just did this a few minutes ago, so I'm not going to bring up the calculator. But what we do need to remember is that this has a cube unit because it is a volume. It's a three-dimensional unit. We're filling up with cubes instead of just with two-dimensional squares, right? If you use 3.14, so if you use 3.14 instead of the pi button, then I think the rounding comes out to... Uh, 376.8 cubic centimeters. So, and I do think actually I got exactly 377 the other way. So you guys can punch that in and let me know. All right, so now we have the surface area and the volume of our cone.